All right, and we are live. Welcome, welcome everybody to Malika's Flex. Um, whether you are joining on time or after the fact, I feel like most people join after the fact, but it's okay. We're recording on the list. Um, we are continuing with our series, Is the Grass Greener on the Other Side? We had stopped at part four, and here we are with part five, and we will be diving into the UAE, United Arab Emirates. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, and we have a guest today who has, you know, graciously accepted the offer to to come and share with you all, um, Miss Tarina Young Davis. She'll be sharing with you all. And, uh, you know, let me just stop talking so that she can just do a brief introduction of, of herself. And, guys, please remember get active in the chat. Kerry saying, Hey, Tarina. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> our guest to just do a quick in, um, introduction of, her, of herself. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tarina Young Davis. I'm originally from Clarendon, oh. Clarendon, Jamaica, and I've been a teacher here in the UAE for the almost six years. Wow! So August will be my sixth year. So I've been here since 2017, mm. and I've been a teacher for ten years. And it has been a roller coaster. It has been a blessing. It has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so wow. that's my so, age. <laughs> thank you so much. So, like, you taught for four years in Jamaica. Yes. And then the next six. Okay. So, after four years, yeah. you were like, bye. <laughs> Sayonara. Before, before four years. <laughs> before four years. Yeah. You know, it's funny because, like, I don't think many teachers are, you know, doing that whole longevity thing in Jamaica anymore. The 30 years, like... People are finding out that they can leave and they're really taking the opportunities, which is why we're here to help them to navigate um, and yes. figure out what they really want to do. So what really, what was your driving force really to take up yourself and go so far? Um, what prompted me almost six years ago, I just wanted a change and I realized that I could earn more. I deserve more. So I started finding ways to achieve that okay but yes. um i guess one would ask why didn't you go to england or the us or one of the i guess popular ones hi black girl tt <laughs> hey black girl tt i need to go on youtube so i can keep up yes Just give me one sec give no problem sec. no problem all right give me one sec oh meantime, so mm -hmm, go ahead i tried to go ahead no, I thought you were going to take a moment. So I was just going to say welcome again. No, I did, it, I did it already. I did it already. Okay, okay. So I can keep up somewhat. Um, I I tried to, to, to get into the U.S. But when I when I started, you know, doing my research and all of that, they right. wanted two years after my degree. Okay? okay. So I am a late bloomer. So I did everything from 2010 to 2018. So the diploma, the degree, the master's, I'm a late bloomer. So when I wanted to go overseas, I only had um, one year plus on my, with the diploma and they wanted the degree. So I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and get the degree. When I got the degree, they said, no, I have to get two more years, two years, two years with that. And I said, what? <laughs> two years in this system again? I'm yeah. like, no, I couldn't do that. So yeah. I started looking elsewhere because I did my teaching practice at a prep school at Vars Prep. So when I went to a, a, a public school, a government school in, in rural Clarion, I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. I did not yeah. sign up for this. Honestly, it's like I walked in a brick wall. I did not sign up for this. You know, I was at Vars Prep and I, you know, all of that. And then I said, no, I need something else. I need to try and see if there's something else out there. And then, you know, as I said, with the US, that didn't work out. And being the type of person I am, I said, no, it have to work. There must be right. something else. So I started looking in the Middle East. Wow. Um, 
interesting and i really wanted us to go back to the point where you said that they want they were requiring you to actually have your two years after the degree and I, it's something so unfortunate because i do know people who have like 10 years of teaching experience 15 years 20 years yes. but they just didn't do the, the the degree until you know late after and they're still requiring that two years it's crazy and they're missing out on some really you know quality teachers just because of that one rule that they you know that they're trying to maintain um okay so what was your process like you know getting from jamaica to the uae because i know nothing about the process um and i must confess my original choice was to go somewhere in the uae but i was i think i was going about it the wrong way <laughs> i learned later <laughs> on um so what's the process like for somebody because i see filippo ghtv in the comments saying that he's from ghana and he also wants to go to where you're at so what's a, what was the process like if you could tell us like briefly from from the application straight up to when you arrived in um in abu dhabi yes so um there are many processes there are many ways of um reaching the uae if you need to you don't want to be a teacher here so I, I signed up with a recruiter then. It was direct um, teacher recruitment company. And it don't seem like they're operating anymore. But that company was amazing. Mm. So I just signed up on their website. And then they would send me um, job vacancies that match my qualifications and my interests. So first, you'll find a recruiter then they will guide you through the process. There are many other recruiters right now. So they told me that I needed to attest my documents. So that's what the first time I, I, I learned about attestation and all of that. So first you have to get your degree attested, degree recommendations, experience letter, and all of that. Okay. Here in the UAE, um, your degree has more weight than the master's, I, I believe. And then you have to have the experience to back it. So the UAE does look at the two years um, teaching experience as well. But luckily, I got in with only the one year on my degree. But they do right now, they are really strict on that, even though there are newly there are schools that are newly qualified teachers. OK, so let, let me try to stay focused. So first, you get in touch with <laughs> you get in touch with a recruiter. That's one way. Then you, they will guide you through the process. Make sure that your documents are attested first in your own country, at the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jamaica. Get it stamped at the Ministry of Education and all of that. Okay. Mm. And then you know you do the interview process and all of that. Okay. And then the school, they will do the paperwork in terms of your visa, okay? They will send you um, what is called an e-visa. Mm. So it is not something that is stamped in your book. So they will just send you that via email. So whether it's, I, I came up on a visit visa, okay? For my second job, I came up on a, on a work visa, but it wasn't a residency visa as yet, okay? okay. All right. So there are there are many different types of visas exactly. that you can use to come into the UA. So I came up on a tourist visa. So I use that along with my US visa to travel to the UAE. Okay. All okay. right. So for the waiting process for me, when I did the interview and arrived in the UAE, it was about three weeks. Okay. I got the opportunity and I did not let it go. All right. I wasn't thinking about, okay, let me think about it, nothing like that, all right? I told my family about it. They, are very, they were very supportive. They still are amazing when it comes to support. So I didn't have a problem with that. So my waiting period from when I did the interview to you know, getting my ticket and all of that was about two and a half to three weeks. Oh, okay. Yes, it was. Yes, that's my experience. Others, it, it moves, it takes a lot longer. But mine was about that because right. I got the job in, I got the job in late, was it late July? Yes, late July. Because I think I was having VBS around VBS time in the summer, and then after that, you know, I had to be there by. Mm, I 
think I came about the third week of August, run about there. Mm. So by the time I got the ticket and to finalize everything, I was in the UAE in less than a month. Yeah. That's good. All yes. right. Um, you said that um you tran you you transit through the US to get to the UAE. Yes. Is there another route? Um because yes, I know there are. Okay, what other Maybe. routes do people take? Okay, so if you don't have a US visa, you can either travel from Montego Bay to Germany and then from Germany to Dubai. Okay. okay. Or you can travel from Jamaica to Panama and I don't remember the other stops before Panama or mm -hmm. between Panama and Jamaica. I'm not sure. But there's a road from Jamaica, Panama, and Dubai. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I ask because, like, some people would want, although you have the transit visa to go through the U.S., most people yes. would prefer to acquire the tourist visa because yes. it's, it lasts much longer than the transit, and they're basically the same amount of money. Um, yes. and of course, some people are turned on with the tourist visa because they know that kind of tricky. Right. <laughs> um, so that's why I asked that question. You also mm -hmm. mentioned that, that you went through an agency. You're not sure if they're operating yes. now, but did you have to pay any money to, to the agency? No, no, I, I didn't have to pay anything. The thing in the UAE, and that's one of the major red flags that I always tell teachers about. If an agency asks you to pay them, that's a red flag. Mm. Okay. So, so the agents and recruiters, the companies, they get paid when I get a job, when you get a job. So when right. you sign that offer letter, you sign that contract, boom, that's their that's their um, payday. Okay? Mm -hmm. But they don't need or they should not charge you money. Some agents, though, they are companies, so they will charge you money like to fix the CV or to do some other thing that can prepare you or have a meeting that can prepare you for the interview. Right. But outside of that, when it comes to visas, application form, applications, processing, anything like that, you should not pay any money. Okay. Um, I see yes. a question in the chat and I'm just informing everybody watching right now, we will be responding to questions later on, like at the end. Um, so just hang tight, you guys, and keep your questions. You can type them from now because we'll go back to them if you don't, you know, you don't want to forget your question. But we'll be responding to those, um, you know, a little later. Um, all right, so that's that. What was house hunting or apartment hunting like? Do they provide you with uh, somewhere to live? Is it a house? Is it an apartment? How does that work? Okay, all right. Can I backtrack a little about... Um, arriving in dubai because yeah. when i when i got the ticket and i did all of that okay you know transiting through the us the flight is 16 hours if you're leaving from um, miami okay 16 hours so when i arrived in dubai i was told that um someone would pick me up and take me to the apartment that did not happen so I had to take a taxi. They said, okay, just take a taxi. You know, it's safe. And, you know, you come to um, Dubai, you just take a taxi. Girl, don't know anywhere. Um, that's the first time I've ever traveled so far. I would be freaking <laughs> so, out. That's all I know. I would be freaking out. No, exactly. So I said, all right, let me just brave it up and pretend like said, you know, I'm a regular traveler. Oh my God. So I, I took a taxi and then... Halfway through the journey, the taxi said, oh, madam, it is it is too far to go to, to, to Abu Dhabi. I will put you on another taxi. I said, what? Put me on another taxi? Oh, my God. <laughs> so it, 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 it stopped a little, like maybe for three minutes. And, you know, before that, because, you know, we're street smart in Jamaica. So yeah. I just put the phone and I put it on a ringtone, right? And say, for instance, the principal at the time was Miss Mary. I ain't going to call anybody's name, all right? Mm -hmm. So Miss Mary. And I said, yes, ma'am, I'm in the taxi and so and so and for not ringing it up. And here the taxi screen, they have, um, you can see the driver's name and everything. Right. And I was like, yes, um, the taxi driver is Mohammed and whatever. Just for the driver to make sure, say, hello, you're not going to take me away today, right? And because I, I didn't know anything about the UAE. May I come mm -hmm. with my Jamaica stereotype thing? Okay, you're not going to take me away today. <laughs> so 
<laughs> he stopped on the road and he put me in a different taxi, okay? So this taxi took me to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is about one and a half hours from Dubai, depending on where in Abu Dhabi you are going, mm -hmm. okay? So it wasn't bad. It's just that I did not know that, you know, Abu Dhabi, the UAE was so safe. So I, all I could do just relax. The taxi would have yeah. taken me. Yes. And then when I reached there, she was like, did you get the receipt? I'm like, what receipt? She said, from the taxi. Didn't you get the receipt? You're going to taxi give receipt? receipt? <laughs> That's the thing. Yes. That's the thing. Like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, that was an experience, you know. So, but other than that, on my, the second time I came to the UA for a new school, we got a bus because it was a, a group of us coming over. So we got a bus and the bus took us to the apartment. So back to your question for the apartment. So this is my third school, okay? All right. My third school, and I'll tell you about three different types of accommodations All right. based on my experience. So that's the disclaimer. So I don't want persons to think that, okay, you will definitely get what Terina had. Right. Okay? I have no. So my first school, I got a shared apartment because I came by myself. I didn't bring my family with me. So I am married with two children, okay? Is that your so husband? I, I see somebody say, hey, my beautiful wife. <laughs> Hi, darling. That's my husband. I told you it was Aww. very special. <laughs> Hi, Hazi. Thank you. you for tuning in. <laughs> That's, That's my so husband's nice. question. Yes. So <laughs> I came by myself. So I got a shared apartment, okay? I, the shared apartment, you'll get your, home, your own room and bathroom. But you share like the kitchen, washroom, living area, and all of that. Right. All right. So that was a very big, big apartment. And this and is it was the the record, paid for, yes. paid for by yes. the people, not you. No, it was paid by the school. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was right. paid by the school, fully furnished. Okay. My utilities were paid, fully furnished in terms of you'll get your bed, a dresser, a table, a little table set. Um, I'm trying, I'm looking around, trying to see what I have. Um, all the basic closet, things. And all of that, all the basic things, right. okay? Yes. And, um, but for me, because I, you know, I, I, I wasn't used to sharing with anybody. So when I went there, I took a little, uh, two plates for myself. I took two cups. I took two forks. I took two little this, and I kept them in my room. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I started buying, a, like I bought a little fridge a little two burner stove and you know as a seven day adventist there are things that i don't eat and when persons are cooking things in the same pot and i have to use the same pot and right. then i start buying my own stuff so that was a shared apartment okay then after i spent a year at that school because that school did not provide family accommodations mm -hmm. first you know that's why i got the shared one and i wanted to take my family with me so i started looking for another job so in 2018, I got another job and that company gave me um, a four bedroom apartment, fully furnished, utilities paid, everything was covered, four bedroom this apartment. Good. Yes, it was, <laughs> it, it was a very good um, deal. Yes. So I was able to take my family over. All right. So I worked at that school for four years. So I just started a new school in September. This school also, um, I have a family apartment, um, three bedrooms, utilities. I have to pay utilities for this one. Okay. Okay. Yes, I have to pay utilities. Is that expensive, by the way? Pardon me? Is that, is that expensive? Um, seeing that I wasn't paying any for five years, yes, it's expensive. It is. It is expensive. Um, let me see if I can compare it to like US dollars. Yeah. Um, for my AC, I'll pay like AC bill, I pay like 50 US dollars. Okay. Yes, for the month. And it fluctuates. Since you're going into the summer, closer to summer now, I know it will go up. Right. And then for, I pay municipality, that is about 100 a hundred US. I can't touch that. You can't. That's one fixed thing that goes to the okay. government. Okay. Like if just for the building and all of that. Word, you, you contribute to road and all these. 
everything that makes the country look the not not country yeah. that makes Abu Dhabi looks like look like what it yes, is. Yes, yes, and yes, that helps me to have live a comfortable life here. So right, and then for so the municipality water and light that is about two hundred and twenty are 210 US dollars, run about there. Utilities do, they do sound a little bit high. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is, I think it is. But when I look at it though, it's manageable. Yeah. It's manageable, all right? Yeah. So you have accommodations that you will share that will cover all the, some will cover all the utilities and some that they will give you the furnished apartment but you have to pay your pay your own utility bills, and there are some companies that give you a very high salary, and then you have to find everything for yourself, accommodation and everything for yourself. Mm. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, so those are the differences. So I guess it balances all because, as you said, that some of them are giving you a high salary. You have to pay your own utilities. It's still a way. They're still basically technically paying for your. Your, your accommodation by giving you a for that for that company for that company that gives a higher salary that's the only to me that's the only good benefit that you get the salary so you'd have to think about going out to find somewhere to rent and to to furnish the apartment pay utilities right um pay tuition and all of that if you have children yes okay um and you did mention that you have a husband you have children yes <sighs> What's the process like? Because I'm pretty sure, like many people, they have um, spouses, children, and they want to know: Can I bring my children? Can I bring my spouse? Will my spouse be able to work? Um, and I've heard all sorts of things that I know that, that are I'm, I'm being misinformed. So I want to hear mm -hmm. from the horse's mouth. How, <laughs> let me start with, cause I feel like I asked like three questions in one just now. Let's start with the spouse. Can your spouse yes. call? How does work work out for your spouse? How does he get to work? Okay, um, let's, let's, let's go back to, let me just share a little with the companies that you work for, the schools, okay? Mm -hmm. So, the, there are some companies that will help you with the visas for your family. Right. All right. My second job did not do that. So I had to sponsor my, my, my family myself. This mm -hmm. current job, I'll do the, the paperwork. I'll do everything. And then they, they gave me back the money. All right. Okay. So as the one that, as the person who got that first job offer, I was responsible to take my family. I, do, I did the sponsorship. So I put the paper in for their residency visa, Emirates ID, and all of that. Okay? okay. Yes, my your spouse can work, but the thing is, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I would I would be lying if I told you. Okay, it's very easy. Take all of the family members here. You, right. They will work. No, it's not easy. All right, it's not easy. But yes. Once your spouse is um, qualified in a certain area, they can go job hunting and they'll get a job. Or hopefully they will get a job. Oh, wow. But there are jobs here for everybody um, at every level, okay? You have mm -hmm. laborers, you have qualified persons, you have trained persons. You just need a, a, a certificate. You will get a job. But it must be available, okay? The job must wow. be out there for you. So that is where the difficulty comes in. So yes. it's not that the type the job titles are there, but it's the availability that's the issue. It's the availability, job availability. It's not easy for you know for for spouses that are not teachers. Wow. Okay? Education is a big thing in the UA, a big business in terms of schools. Right. Okay. So that is why you have. Um, the expat teacher population is large in the UAE, mm -hmm. but you also have accountants and doctors and nurses and all of this. Right. But it's hard for you to get in. Right. A job. I guess we can compare it to Jamaica somewhat because we do have many qualified persons in Jamaica outside of the teaching yes. field um, who can't get a job because it's just not available. <laughs> just not available. Yes. Wow. That, that's that's and, what I'm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. My point was 
Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and sometimes the job is available, Malika, but you see, because mm -hmm. the UAE is such a melting pot with different expats, okay? Um, uh, this I, I hope this is close to the true figure. It's about 10 million people in the UAE. Wow. Okay. And maybe there's only like one point something million are locals, are Emiratis. Wow. So, yes. So can you imagine the expat population in the UAE? Mm -hmm. All right. And there, if there's a job, if there's a job for, let me just use a teacher. I don't want to offend anybody. So as a teacher, um, and I know that with my qualification and whatever, I will not work for 8,000 dirhams or 7,000 dirhams. Other teachers from other countries, okay, because there are so many of us here and the, uh, the conversion rate in their country, there are teachers who will work for that or less than that. Mm. Okay, so can you imagine your spouse coming with his degree, years of experience, okay, and he knows that this is my worth, okay, right. I should be getting this salary. You have persons that will work far less than, for far less than what you would take. So because employers know that, why pay you 10 when I can pay someone 3 or 5? You understand know what I mean? Yes, so I here, yeah. but it's just so many persons are willing to mm -hmm. take less, or it's not that they are willing to take less, mm -hmm. but when they when they convert the money in their country, it's right. a lot. But I'm so converting. Stop converting yes. and take it through you know, worth based on your qualification and experience because at the end of the day, we are converting to our own countries, but you're living in a whole new country. So yeah. yes, you're converting and you're saying, all right, this is a hundred thousand in, in Jamaican dollars, and I can send a hundred thousand every month to, um, for example, to my family, and that's a lot which I before. But guess what? While you're able to do that for your family and they can live comfortably, are you living comfortably in the country that you migrated in? Exactly. Or migrated exactly. to. So like people really need to stop converting and just look at the money for what it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly but what to do when for some of them that they're the only breadwinner is like like myself they took the trip to say okay i need to make better for myself and my family so they yeah yeah they'll take so yes your spouse can get a job but it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not easy and a lot of couples are here and the, if, if, if the husband is a teacher, the wife is a teacher, sometimes you are the only one that is working. Wow. Yeah. Um, is that difficult, by the way, if you're the only one working at the moment? In that yes, it, can. yes it, 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 it is difficult. You know, it's just like back home because you have bills to pay here. You have bills back home to pay. You have yes. children. You have, yes, it can be. Yeah. But if, if your spouse has a good salary, and they're working for a company that that takes off some of the um like you don't have to pay rent you don't have to pay utilities mm -hmm. then you can see your way through but at the end of the day yes it is difficult it's okay. a challenge um i want to go on to the children's side so yeah. i know that you said that you were able to apply for their residency visa and whatnot how easy or difficult was it for you to get them into school? Because I'm sure parents, that's their biggest concern. Um, it was not so much difficult, but it wasn't easy either. Okay. okay? There's the, the, the way I'm saying, because there's a process. Here in the UAE, there's a process for everything. There's documentation mm -hmm. for everything. It's not like back home, you know, you could just like send the people to school and let them stay there till I start all stuff. Right. Here in the UAE, you can't. You have to make sure you have all your 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 your, your documents. And mm -hmm. when you are coming with children who are still in school, like from KG up to high school, you have to get um, the birth certificate attested. Right. You have to bring their last school report. Mm -hmm. You have to bring um, a transfer letter from the school as well. Okay. If you if your child attended a school, say for my daughter, she was in third form when she left Jamaica. And 
I had to get a letter from the school explaining that third form is the same as grade nine. Right. Because they don't use that, that term here. Right. They used to grade nine. Yes. So I had to get that document and that letter, and I have to get it attested as well. Okay. So that took a long time right. for me to get that document from Jamaica. So if you know that you need these things, okay, it would be make the transition process a lot easier. So for parents, you have to get the birth certificate um, attested, letter from the school, report from the school as well. And if it's one of those high schools that says um, third form, first form, all of that, make sure that you have um, within the letter from the school, it's stated in that that this grade, grade, grade nine is the same as third form and so on. So, okay, just to mm -hmm. save time. And if you have a child that all right say you're married and you have a child and that child is not for your husband you will need a permission letter from the child's father wow okay even if you're not married and you're a single mom coming to the uae without the child's father you need a permission letter even if you're married you need that okay okay so somebody yes. five hundred dollars per document for attestation and that it might be more now. That's in Jamaica. Carrie, somebody, somewhat Carrie said. Maybe Carrie's saying it's in Jamaica. Maybe okay. it's in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is something that you need to look at. Okay. Keep that in mind that if you're traveling without the child's father, whether you're married or not, and once the father is not there, you need a permission letter. Because as you know, this is the Middle East and that is culture. All right. That's the male kind of is of the house. Right. Also, they have the right to do this and to do that. So you have to make sure that you have something to state that the father gives you permission. That's scary. I mean, it's good because, of course, yes. as a father, you do have a right to know your child's whereabouts and whatnot. But it's also scary because, unfortunately, we live in a world where some women do go undergo abuse from their spouses yes. and they're really trying to, you know, get away. Um, so I'm pretty sure that would be scary for somebody in a situation like that, where they're just trying to, you know, create a new life for, you know, themselves yes. and their children. By the way, do you think, or would you advise a single mother of small children who really would want to just live there to do that, to yes. migrate them? It, it's, it's, it's workable. Malika. I would even encourage somebody to move with them dog. <laughs> I'm an advocate. Listen, oh I tell you, I'm an advocate for teachers to become international teachers, to mm. step out of their comfort zone. And yes. before we move on, though, you see when you get that letter from the father, yes. you need a copy of his, his ID as well. Okay? Yes. This should be stamped by a JP, and it should also be attested. All right? Just to put it out there. Wow. So you so can just create a letter and let somebody sign it and say it's the father. You have to have ID. You have to have the ID and the signature have oh. to match what is on the ID. Oh. Wow. They are okay. for real. Yes. Yes. Because you need that when you're doing the visa because there is a slot on there somewhere that you have to put that in. All right. So to go back to what you asked about single mothers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you I encourage recommend. everyone if you can um, if you can grab this opportunity with both hands and, and your two feet, your two leg, grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it is feasible. It is feasible. What's your work day like? Like what time do you start working? Lunch time? What time do you get to leave work? What's the work day like for you? Uh, my work day starts at 7.30 p.m., mm -hmm. okay? I have to be at work by 7.30, and I go up to 3.30 on a regular day, but the students leave at 2.30, mm. 2.45, 2.45, okay? And then I have some days that I have PDs up to 4, but regularly oh. I stay to 3.30, some days 4.00. And on Fridays, I leave work at 12.15. Oh, yes. that yes. sounds nice. Yes. Do you have to work on the weekend by chance? 
No. Okay. No. No, no, no. We no. have many like staff meetings. Yes, we have a lot of PDs. We have a lot of PDs. Uh, <sighs> Let, let, <laughs> yes, too many. We have too many PDs. Where's if I'm prepared? We are preparing for an inspection. The school is preparing for an inspection. Oh you can have a PD every single day except for Friday. All right. So we have a lot of PDs. So my work day, um, eight hours. I am a grade one teacher, so I'm a homeroom teacher. So I teach math, English, science, mm -hmm. and reading. Okay, those four core subjects, and I one session is about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes, okay? Right. And I don't use, I, we don't really have lunch time for my, I don't really have lunch time, okay? But the kids, they get break somewhere around 9.40, and then they'll get break at 12.35. So I, I'll eat with them, mm -hmm. or when I have a, non-contact time it's not free time and non-contact time when they go to arabic or islamic studies i will right. have my my breakfast or my lunch within that time okay yes not sounding bad how large are your classes um classes depending on the school depending on the school my first school we had about 29 kids the second school i had like between 18 and 25 this okay. school maximum 30. Okay. what's the behavior like of the students um if you were to compare it to students in jamaica um i teach grade one so mm -hmm. behavioral issue for me is not too much mm -hmm. you know grade one is just the complaining just the talking and the yeah. nagging and you know they complain about every little thing yeah. and the being a busy body being a busybody, that's, you know, that's my experience. Kids are kids everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, uh, they can be naughty. Yes. Rumbus, what's that word? I always want to use it, but I don't know how to say it. Rumbus. What's the word? Listen, I, have, I tell people all the time. Have, like, somebody in the chat will put it in there for me. Yeah, I tell they people both, all the time, I am an old English guru. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like the boys, they are very busy. You mm -hmm. literally tell a, to a child to sit like one minute and then you can catch his eyes looking at you like that. While his eyes is on you, he's moving, you know, things uh -huh. like that. So behavioral issue for me is not a big issue. It, that's just it. But I have colleagues that would tell you that they have great challenges when it comes to behavioral issues in the oh, classroom. Okay. All like, right? So I don't want... Yes, I don't want to paint the picture that you're going to come and you're going to have a classroom like mine right. that you can talk to them and, you know, I, I use different strategies to, 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 to manage my class, which right. I think the behavior is not bad. But when compared to others, mm -hmm. it can be very challenging here in mm -hmm. the UAE when it comes to behavior, okay? Okay, Um, I want to talk about lesson planning. Do you have lessons created for you do you have to create your own lesson <laughs> um and while you while you respond to that question i'm asking everybody to beg my pardon for some reason i forgot to plug in my laptop so it's i'm dying so while terina is answering that question i'll just be you'll see my black screen but i'll be listening i'm just plugging in my laptop in the meantime so please forgive me everybody what's lesson planning like for you Okay, lesson planning, we plan in groups, okay? So I'm a part of the ELA team, that's English language team. And we have a math team, a science team, and we all do our own reading lessons. So lesson plans, lessons are not created for us. You have to definitely create your own lesson plans. And it can be a challenge depending on the school environment that you're working in, okay? What is required by the school? So yes, that can be a challenge when it comes to lesson planning. But if you have a good team, then it will make it much easier, okay? When I just started with this school, it like five of us is on the team. So I would plan this week. So for the next five weeks, four weeks, you know, I'm off lesson planning, okay? then 
we change and we were told to do our own reading plan. So every week I have to plan for my own reading lesson. But once you create that first um, lesson, you know, you can change activities, change the reading book or something that's make it a little easier. But now as the ELA team, each person is planning a day because this new lesson plan template, it's more detailed. So when it would take me like maybe one hour or less to plan the ELA lesson before, no, it's take me, taking me like three, four hours because it's very detailed. So we, we, we look at it and say, okay, let's each take a day. Mm -hmm. And that makes it much easier. So it depends on the team that you're working, you're working with. It depends on the school and mm -hmm. what they want in that lesson plan. Okay. Okay. And then when you do your lesson plan, my school, they, they, they require us to annotate it, to write on the lesson plan. So you have to make notes on it. You have to have um, put sticky notes on it and to say what you're going to change or what you didn't use or whatever. So you are required to do that as well. Basically, you're evaluating the lesson. Okay. So you have to do that. Yes. What are some of the major similarities and some of the major differences in terms of how school operates in Abu Dhabi versus um, Jamaica. What are some things that are similar? What are some things that are um, very much like different? Like if I go to Abu Dhabi, this will definitely stand out as a difference. And this is something I can definitely say, okay, this is similar in the school uh -huh. environment. There are so many differences, but um, similarities, there are, there are few. I I can only say like, like Jamaica, you might have a supportive team you might find the one and two teachers that you will, you know, become friends with. Okay. And but I can't find I can't find any distinct similarities, similarities. unfortunately. Okay. okay. When you come to the UAE, it's like you have to unlearn everything. That's my experience. That's the experience of wow. many other teachers. It's like you have never taught before. That's my wow. yes. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you know, you will know that you're a teacher, but the way of doing things, it's total, it's, it's just different. Mm. Keep in mind that this is a Muslim country, okay? Ooh. So everything, every single thing, all the, the, the laws of the, the country, it's, it's shaped and molded by the Islamic laws. Right. So and that, in that, 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 does that affect how you have to dress? Yes, and how you teach. Okay. Okay? The content that you put out. Mm. So, yes, you have some idea of, the, like, if you're using the American curriculum. This might take a while to explain, because I don't want to take, I don't want, to, if you have time, I have we time. Have, listen, I have nothing to do. <laughs> I don't want to create, I don't want to create, because sometimes we, we tend to create a picture, and the, the, the title is, it is it greener? Right. It's definitely greener, but you have to water this grass, okay? okay. And it comes with the workload. Right. It comes with the workload. So uh, you have to think about the school environment that you work in, all right? And the ethos of the school and the admin and all of that, what that governs how you teach and the daily running of your school. All right. So the differences are huge. Similarities only for me in terms of, yes, you have to write lesson plans and you know your roles of, a te of, of being a teacher. But here you're more you're more of a facilitator. OK, depending right. on the activities that you have to put out in your lesson. But the major differences for me is the curriculum. Yes, there are some standards that are similar in, in Jamaica, but it's totally different here because you're using the American curriculum. Some schools use the British curriculum. All okay. right. And even though you're using the American curriculum, it depends on the state. Right. Yes. Curriculum that you're using. And even though you're using that curriculum, it is how it is adapted to suit your school and the students that you're teaching. So that's a different thing. Okay. Mm. So for me, I like to be a novice. Okay. When I start a new school, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Because when you come as if you know everything, it's going to make things difficult because it's going to be harder for you to let go. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said you have to, it's like you have to unlearn a lot of things. 
All right, you have to learn and learn a lot of things. And you have to be able to adapt, to be flexible and to learn. So there are a lot of differences in the way you teach, what you're able to teach, how you're able to teach, mm -hmm. um, who you dress, and uh, how you interact with the students. Even, you know, classroom management, the behavior and all of that is different from Jamaica, totally different. All right. So did I answer your question? Should I go? Definitely, through? definitely. Um, Fine. Would I get into trouble? Because like here in the US, you are discouraged from speaking about, because you said that it's an Islamic nation. Um, we are discouraged as adults from speaking about our own religions. Um, kids can talk to kids about religion or whatever. They're allowed to do that. But as an, an, as an adult to a child, would I get in trouble if I'm in class? And um, not to say I'm having a whole discussion about my religion, but let's say some, I, I should just, you know, use a regular expression that we use all the time, like, oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> and then let's say a child um, asks me, or let me say, thank you, Jesus, or something like that. And then a child yes. should, should say like, Jesus. And you say, yes, I worship Jesus or something like that. I, would I get in trouble? Yes, you can lose your job. Ooh, wow. Yes, you can. You are discouraged to talk about religion. All right. You are discouraged in all form to talk about religion. Don't encourage, don't engage students in any discussion. If they come to you and said, Miss so and so, I said, Okay, that's great. Nice to know. Thank you for sharing that. Right. That's it. Okay. Um, and and if a child asks me, uh, Miss, are you Muslim? I said, I don't wish to speak about that. Mm, okay. okay. All right. Tell them, no, I'm not Muslim. Okay. It depends on the age. It depends on the child. Some kids, they are sneaky. All right. They mm, will say yes. things and put things out of you. And yes. at the end of the day, you are left in hot water. Ooh. So you're, you're, you're discouraged to talk about religion. Mm -hmm. All right. And even even if i'm using a manipulative and there's a picture of a church on it i can't use that i can't use a worksheet with a church on it okay i can't even show a picture with the nurse with the cross on the hat as simple as the, a clip art would look like that i can't use that well, hold on 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 because i teach spanish and uh, when we're doing um, vocabulary, you know, most times it entails us, you know, having pictures and whatnot. Um, so <laughs> um, sometimes uh, what are the vocabulary words? Like if we're doing places around town or whatever, a word could be church. Um, I guess I would not use church. I would have to use, is it a mosque that the Islam, that the Muslim? Yes mosque yes. i guess instead of using a church i would have to use a mosque and that yes, would have to be vocabulary have... instead of church yes yes okay yeah, let them learn it somewhere else don't be the one to say you right. know my teacher told me about this today right. and no, don't don't be the one to do that you have and we call it cultural sensitivity you have to respect culture at the end of the day it doesn't matter what you believe what you think you respect mm -hmm. culture you respect okay. people for what they believe yes. and leave it on. Because they will respect you for what you believe in. It's not because you can't talk about it because it doesn't mean that they don't respect you. Mm -hmm. All right? They don't, they don't um, force or push you, push um, Islam on you. They don't force anybody to dress like a Muslim. Okay. or to become a Muslim or anything like that. So if they don't do it, you don't do it. Right. It's basically that. Right. And as a teacher, you have to be aware of what is what is cultural sensitivity or um, culture. What is that? At the end of the day, make sure whatever you're doing, it doesn't infringe on their rights or their culture, okay, or what they believe in. But you will, your school admin, they will tell you all of this. Mm -hmm. And tell the topics that you can talk about, whatever. Because if I am showing even a day at the beach, I have to make sure that there are no nobody there in a skimpy bikini. I can't show that picture. Simply mm -hmm. as I can't show a picture with a boy even in a 
in a bathtub, taking a shower, or you're, you're, doing, wow. you're doing some activity, you're doing uh, verbs or something like that. You can't use pictures like that. Wow, I'm learning. Yeah, things like that. Okay, you have to be careful mm -hmm. about, you know, how you, what, how you dress, how you, how you interact with the students. Because oh, as sorry. I said, every, every single thing is governed by the Islamic law. Outside of school, I know you talk about how you dress at school. Outside of school, if you're someone who likes to wear skimpy clothing, um, are you allowed to do that outside of school, to the supermarket, um, to the to a restaurant? Can you wear whatever you want? It depends. Because when you're in Dubai, I see people like tourists and they have, oh, and I see the butt cheeks out. At times, I see the butt cheeks out, yeah. And then I see girls coming from the gym in their little ties and little shorts and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but generally here in the UAE, you hardly see people like that, unless you can, because you can see a tourist. Yeah, you know a tourist separate from. Yes, you know a tourist when you see one. You understand? Right. For persons that are residents and here in the UAE, we, we understand how to dress. So persons okay. will definitely be in their short shorts and the skirts and all of that. Mm -hmm. But it's not skimpy enough like back home. Mm. Okay. It's not skimpy like back home. And mm -hmm. when you dress for work, you have to make sure that your elbows are covered and your knees are covered. Yes. No no cleavage. I wouldn't even wear this it's stuff. What? Over there? Yes. I wouldn't it wear this stuff to work. With, with this, okay. unless I put something under that it covers up here. I wouldn't wear this to work. So like, <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, like this, <laughs> this is fine. That's this is fine. fine. But you have to just, yeah, you have to just make sure that when you bend over that your cleavage is not being exposed. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um. Yes. So, um. okay. So in terms of religion, mm -hmm. you said that, okay, it's an Islam Islamic nation. Do you, and you said that they respect your beliefs and whatnot. Yes. Do you get like a Christmas break? Yes, we get Christmas break. Yes, we get winter break. And Christmas, well, when you go to the malls here, you will definitely see the Christmas decorations. Oh, okay. You will see Santa sitting there and, you know, kids taking pictures with Santa. And and Santa but do you see like baby Jesus, Mary? Yes, you will depend on where you go. Right. Like if you go to the um to the churches that are having their celebrations, you'll see them there. Okay. Okay. Now that you know we're in Easter. Um yesterday they had um Good Friday service at certain churches. So were you off yeah. from school or yes, I've been off since um maybe the 10th. I'm what are the breaks school. that you guys get? Tell me about the breaks. So say say you get Christmas. We get, we get we get winter break just like you guys. Okay. We get spring break. Because I'm mm -hmm. off on spring break now. Three weeks of spring that. break. Oh. Three weeks. What? Yes. Get, listen, that's for my school. Listen, all this three weeks go. I have two weeks by my two weeks at home. Uh -huh. And then next week I'll go to school for two days. Mm -hmm. Then I'll stay home and work online for two days. Mm -hmm. So okay. next week is the PD week. Wow. That's nice though. Like yeah. That's so, and I always tell people like, even if I have to go to work, if there are no students in front of me, it still feels like a holiday. Yes, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's like a holiday because you get to do yeah. things that you want to do, get your classroom ready. Wow. And all of so we get three weeks. Some school get three weeks. Yeah, I like some, that. Some get two. And we get a lot of holidays. We get midterm breaks, but not every school get the same midterm breaks. Right, I understand. Okay, so some school break? get the midterm one week. Okay. So yes, your spring week. break isn't counted as a midterm break? No. That's separate? That's separate. Ooh. I think so. Yeah, this is spring break. We get a lot of breaks. Once Trust Abu Dhabi. <laughs> we get a lot of, we get a lot of breaks because see, like, this is an Islamic nation, right? We get a lot of uh, religious holidays. Breaks. Whoa. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> now that we are in Ramadan, we are in the holy month of Ramadan. Okay. okay. After Ramadan ends um, around the 22nd, 20th, 22nd, run about there. I'm not sure, but it's for one month. Okay. There will be E. So when I go back to school on the 17th of April, when the students will come in, 
then that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So for the Thursday and the Friday, though, that's Eid holiday. So we are going back on a long weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to be off on the long weekend. So we're going to get um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's Eid. That's, that's the end of Ramadan. And then if you have the national holiday that maybe get a two, two days off work plus the weekends, and if they have other Eids coming up in the year, you will get those as well. Three days, four day weekend, and so on. Nice. How long is summer break? Um, it depends on the school, but it's usually about six weeks. Okay. All right. So a little over a month, which is still decent. Yeah. All right, that's all good. I want to move off of religion and go to yeah. another R word. So my friends in China had discussed that they have R issues. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if I can say the word on YouTube. So just, um, okay, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yes. Do you have what R you're issues in Abu Dhabi? I, I don't think it's so much of an issue for everyone, mm -hmm. but it's definitely here. Okay. Um, they were discussing yes. that it's not so much where somebody will say, oh, don't talk to me because you are of a certain skin tone, but more so like it affects like the pay that you get. Like yes. the little, so is that present? Yes, I, I think so. You know, th this country is, last year was the year of tolerance, okay? Mm. So this country is big on tolerance, but you will always find situations and people that mm. don't have the same belief, okay? And mm. I always think that the biggest problem comes from other expats, other mm. nationals, other foreigners, yes. Oh. So I have had um, situation. this is my personal experience, Okay, right. people will just see me and they will assume that I am a nanny, okay, because I am black. Mm, okay. Yes. Wow. And if you dress a certain way, you just want to draw, you just draw, and in Jamaica we say you just draw and something, and you go supermarket. Yeah. You know, you don't know fancy dressing up, you just draw right. and something and go supermarket. <laughs> so this guy will ask me, you clean a house? I'm like, <laughs> I said, you have work for me? How much will you pay? <laughs> Sometimes I will stretch them along. Yes. And sometimes when I started talking to them, then they will realize, that, no, she sounds, she doesn't sound like so and so. But yes, people will automatically think that because you are a certain color, you work in this field. Not not to say that there's something wrong, but mm -hmm. this is the mentality that a lot of persons have. Mm. All right. And here in the UAE, I, I strongly believe that, yes, you will get pay based on your nationality. It wow. does determine your salary. Wow. Thank God I get a very good salary. Seems like it doesn't affect me too much. Praise but the Lord. I have persons, yes, I have persons that it's not, can't say the same thing. Right. So it does exist. And it's good for people yes. to be aware. And that's why we have to ask these questions so people can know yes, what to look out for. Health but, and and I, okay. it's, it's not that, you know, as you said, it, it for me, it is subtle. Mm -hmm. Right. It is, subtle. It is not they like out in your face, like like um other countries. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not out in your face that it is subtle. And if you are naive, it will pass you. Mm. But there are times that you is right in your face, and you have to like right. like seriously. You just did that seriously. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes. Okay. Um, I want to go back to the family. What's health insurance like for you and your family? Like, do you get that benefit? Yes. Okay. Health insurance here in the UAE is amazing. Ooh. That's one of the, the major benefits of teaching in the UAE. You get good health insurance. The government makes sure of that. Mm -hmm. And it covers, yes. what does it cover? Like, do you like, get eye care, dental? Everything except, depending on the package, except um, cleaning. Cleaning is not very expensive and Right. doing what you call this um braces putting on braces oh, okay. that's like so every yes, like, that's cosmetics right that's cosmetics right. so every other thing for dental it's covered but cleaning is not covered um you get dental um 
you get to check your eyes and you get for your regular doctor visits. Um, if you have to do a surgery, once the, the insurance company will, will approve it, you will do your surgery like basically for free. Okay, so what about, can you give birth in the, in the UAE? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just asking like. Yes, you can come here and get pregnant. <laughs> Is it like considered to be um, a citizen or, because I know oh, some no. countries, if the parents aren't citizens, the children will not be considered to be. No, no, you, 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 will, you will not. You cannot get citizenship here in the UAE. Wow. You have to be a native, no, native. You have to have the family line. Yes, you have to have the blonde line. You have to have the blonde line. You have to be a Marathi. Okay. <laughs> I like to say this though with that accent. <laughs> Even Emirati women, if they marry outside of their, you know, their nationality, right. their children are not Emiratis. Yes. Yes. Wow. wow. So the father has to be Emirati for you to be Emirati. So if some woman is lucky and they, they get married to an Emirati man, yes. Mm -hmm. Your child becomes citizen, but it takes a few years for you, the wife, to become citizens. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, you will see a man passing through my background. <laughs> I think my, I'm sorry. My husband just needed to go get something. He's like, <laughs> all right. Oh, I don't even think you guys are seeing him. But okay. Um, love that i love the whole insurance thing because i feel like here in the us i literally have to i feel like i have to go back to jamaica <laughs> to ex to to get certain benefits i guess because it's so expensive here like even if you have health insurance it's good here it's good it's it's practically free trust me when you go you pay like 50 dirhams mm -hmm. um one Durham in one Durham in Jamaica is about 34, 30, around 34 to 36 Jamaican dollars. So please, you can do the calculations. So you'll go for a doctor visit like 50 Durhams. And that doctor visit will give you, say for instance, it will give you a, a pap smear. It can give you an ultrasound. It can give you a mammogram. Right. That 50 Durhams. Wow. Okay. Wow. If you want to check your eyes, you, you can do that for that 50 dirhams. You go on different machines and do all of that just for that 50 dirhams. I and like if you that. go back within the week, the next visit, it's it's free. I like that the grass is definitely sounding green over there. It is greener. It is definitely green. I tell you, it is greener, but you have to water the grass. You have to prune it. You have to cut it. You have... The workload is very heavy. It's a yes. lot of work, but it's definitely greener right um my final question for you and everybody else if you have questions this would be the time for you to put them in the chat um once again if you have questions this would be the time for you to put them in the chat and let me also use this opportunity to opportunity to say like the live anyway um my final question for you i know you said that the grass is greener and you're encouraging mm -hmm. everybody to pick up themselves and them children and them dog and everybody <laughs> Scoop up everybody and come. Well, well, you can't um, carry down. I know, I know, I know, man. Um, but my final question to you would be: Is there yeah. anything that you do miss in Jamaica? If I, uh, in terms of work, in terms of work and otherwise, I miss Jamaica. The food, cheese. Um, I miss the food. I miss um fellowship. It's just the fellowship. I mean, I miss the relaxed vibes of Jamaica. Right. Yes, the UAE, it is safe. The, the lifestyle is amazing. Mm -hmm. But you know, so when you're that fine, it's, it, it, it's not as relaxed mm -hmm. as back home. I miss that. Mm -hmm. I don't miss teaching in Jamaica. I'm going to be honest. Nothing I'm about gonna... it? Nothing. Like I say, I miss my students. Only thing I miss, only thing I, to be honest, yes, let me go back. To be honest, only thing I miss teaching with teaching in Jamaica is that my the students that you teach you will you will teach a student that you know that you know the students have a little challenge where you can push them and right. for me Jamaican children have they are more eager to learn. Yes, that's one of the difference. 
I should have said that's a major difference. The right. Jamaican kids are more eager to learn. We, 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 mm -hmm. we, we take education seriously. You know yes. yes, I miss that. I miss that in Jamaica. But other than that, why well, I me not miss teaching in Jamaica? I'm sorry, but I <laughs> miss that. Yeah, I miss the food, I miss the vibe, I miss the beauty of Jamaica. I miss rain. I miss rain. So much rain? <laughs> yes, I miss real rain, smelling real? the earth when it's wet. I miss that. Here wow. in the UAE, they have cloud seeding, okay? You know what that means? So they will send the jets up the, the clouds and they will fill the clouds with water and then the rain will happen. And then you will only have a little trickle here, so. And then because the drain system wasn't built for rain, you hear said Dubai, part of Dubai did flood out. But I miss real rain. Mm. Yes, I miss rain. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to look behind in the comments because I did say that I would go back for those who had yes. asked before. Um, someone had asked, I literally had it right here. Where'd it go? Right. Somebody had asked, how do you apply for a U.S. transit visa? I guess because we were talking about getting a tourist visa versus a transit visa. Um, you can go ahead and um, <laughs> answer that. A transit visa for uh, for the U.S.? Yes, I guess but you know if you want to travel through the US to get to um I think US. it's I think it's the same process as the the, the, the tenure visa. Tourist visa. The tourist visa. Yes, I think it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's just what you click on the on the system when you're yes, I think so. I think so. But to, to get a, a transit visa here or a tourist visa here in the UAE, all you need to do is just to find a, a legitimate travel agent, okay. And then they will help you to process that, or you can go through the airlines, like right. Emirates or Etihad, and then they will help you with the tourist visa. Right. But um, mm -hmm. as we, as I had said earlier on, if you're going to travel to any country, whether it's the UA, to any place, whether it's the UAE or China or Japan or wherever, somewhere that requires you to actually travel through the US, I would say just try to get the tourist visa because it's the same amount yes. of money, and the tourist yes. visa lasts much longer than the transit visa. It's just right. Yeah, mm -hmm. same That's process with one interview and everything. So, all right, I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Ask your questions, guys. I hope I'm not missing anything. Um, somebody's saying I applied for many jobs but not getting any replies. Oh, Sheikh Salman, okay, and that's another yeah. thing too. With the, with the UAE. You see, because um, there are many different ways of getting jobs here in the UAE. You can you can apply directly to schools mm -hmm. and you can use um, a travel agent, not, oh, mm -hmm. not a travel agent, a recruiter. Okay? Right. So persons will be sending out a lot of applications. All right? And you know, we have this saying in Jamaica, and I, I, I don't know if I should say it, more than born, I've never heard that one. So before. people get offended, huh? People I've get offended when you lose. There is, we have that saying. Okay, you have in here in the UA, you have more teachers than jobs. Wow. Okay? Yes, mm -hmm. you have more teachers than jobs. I believe that. I believe that. Wow. Yes, I believe that. There are a lot of persons here in like that are trained teachers and they're working in other fields because they can't get a teaching job. I feel like I was in the same um, position as Shaikh or Sheikh um, mm -hmm. because that's what I was saying. Like my my first choice was really to go to the UAE to work, but I felt like I was doing something wrong because I was applying directly to schools, and I was doing that because I was wondering or maybe I heard it somewhere, and that's why I asked you earlier on if you have to pay the agencies, and I was like. I don't want any agents to be taking my money on a monthly basis. I just want to get all my money. So I was applying directly to schools, but I kept getting emails after emails. We regret to inform you that da, 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 da. and while at this time right. you are qualified, da, 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 but blah, other applicants, the whole works. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, Shake also asked, "Is it worth to come on a visiting visa, visit visa for a teaching job?" Because I think you said earlier on that you had initially. You initially went there on a visitor's visa, mm -hmm. yes? Yeah. So he's asking, 
or she's asking, I'm not sure the gender, but um, is it worth it? Like, you know, taking that chance to one of visitors' visa. I can't remember. I came on it because the school provided it, so I was coming on a that job. First. Mm, okay. Coming to a job. You can take that risk, but UAE is expensive if you're coming as a tourist, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you have to think about finding a hotel. You have to think about transportation. Right. You have to think about food the time that you're in the UAE without a job, okay? So mm -hmm. where are you going to stay? So when you get that visa, you have to think about ah, all of these things. Remember, right. you don't have a job, all right? So... It can be worth it for some persons, but I don't want to encourage persons to do that because no, you have to get what is called a job seekers visa instead of a tourist visa. So if you come on a tourist visa, make sure you just come to be a tourist. All right. But if you, you want to come and, and look for jobs, you have to apply for the job seekers visa. Mm. Yes. Okay. And make sure you have money. To, 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 to book yourself a hotel room, to move around Dubai or to move around Abu Dhabi. Yeah. I don't think I, I asked you this earlier on, but I know that you said that they took care of your apartments and whatnot. So how much did the process cost you, like moving from Jamaica to UAE? Like how much did it cost you out of pocket? Like if you could put it in US dollars, how much did it cost you, the whole migration process? It didn't, the most money I spent was... Um, just to attest my documents wow. in Jamaica. Yeah. Plane and fare then, was you know, provided. Pardon me? The plane fare was provided and everything. Yes, they provided the plane tickets and all of that. And listen, the, the tickets are expensive from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's 16 hours, you Very. said, in the region in the West. Yes. Wow. You will get a, a ticket. Maybe you're lucky to find a ticket that is like 1,500 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's cheap. That wow. is cheap. Okay. Right. So you can pay more. But they covered all of that. So the most money I spent was to, to get my documents attested honestly. Mm -hmm. Because I came with a thousand US dollars in my pocket and I didn't even spend all of it okay. at the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't spend all of it because the school provided transportation at the time. Right. So basically, it's just food I was taking, you know, spending money on. But I can't give you a figure because I didn't spend a lot of money. It's not like the U.S. Okay. where you had to do all of this. Oh, you're I right. I had my documents. I got myself some suitcase. I bought some clothes. First and all. And that, <laughs> yes. So there wasn't like a, anything major that I had to pay for. Okay. Egbe is asking, so do your kids get to go to school free or do you cover the fees? I didn't quite get that explanation earlier on. Okay. Um, before I answer that question, if you are bringing your family, you're responsible for their plane ticket, visas, and all of that, okay? The mm. school will not cover that. Because they're There's not some working. Some do it, and then they will do it, or, or you will do it, and they'll pay you back, but it's that you'll have to be lucky to get that. Right. For my, for my kids, it depends on the school that you're working for. Some schools give you free tuition, all right? So they will give you free tuition in terms of giving you up to four spaces at the school. So if you have four children mm. and this school will give you four spaces for these kids, that's free. All you have to do is just to take care of uniforms. All right. In my case right. now, I have to, the school give me an allowance. But thank God this allowance mm -hmm. covers the entire school fees. School fees are very expensive here in, in the UAE. Extremely expensive. That's why if you have um, kids, try to get a family package. I call them a family package, okay? It's very expensive. So school fees will be free based on the, the school that you're working with. And some schools will give you an allowance to cover the cost. Some of them will give you a percentage, maybe like 15, 25%. Some will even give you 50% of whatever the school fee is. And you have to cover everything else. Right. Okay. okay. Um, I think, hi, Tamika. Tamika is saying, hi, ladies. Hi, Tamika. I hi, hope I'm from the majority. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Hi, and hi to everybody else. Yeah. Um, Shake is, I think this question is for me. 
is saying, is there still time to apply for teaching jobs in the U.S.? It is mm -hmm. hiring season. Do not itch. It is hiring season. Do not itch. Apply right now. The best time to apply <laughs> would be from January, February, but people, it is schools are doing interviews now. Apply. Oh. And yes, there's a demand for every teacher. Bit. Well, I don't want to say every teacher. Core content teachers, English, um, science, social studies, math. There's a demand for you all right now. And if you're teaching something else, there's still a demand um, for other teachers. So just apply. Application is free. That's the public at least. Um, if there are no more questions, I'm going to allow, uh, allow, allow, <laughs> I'm going to allow um, Tarina to talk about her YouTube because, guys, if you want more information on this whole UAE thing, Tarina has a whole YouTube page dedicated to this. Sometimes I see where she posts jobs that are um, agencies or schools that are currently seeking teachers and whatnot. So I want mm -hmm. to allow her to really talk about exactly what it is that her YouTube is about. I've already placed the link to her YouTube in the description box below. So, um, when we're done here, you can always click on it and head on over to her channel and, you know, finish checking out all her videos and go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you basically said everything oh, okay. about, my, <laughs> about my YouTube channel. And I said before, I'm an advocate when it comes to um, encouraging teachers to become international teachers mm -hmm. because, you know, it changed my life. I know it can right. change others. Yes. Right? So... I encourage everyone to do the same. So on my YouTube channel, I create videos. Um, majority of the content is about teaching in the UAE. What is what's it like? Um, what some challenges I've faced and all of that. I do post a lot of vacancies, job vacancies, but I don't think people really uh, pay attention to that. You know, I put the link there. Like that, Miss. Oh, oh, how do I apply? Where should I send? I put the link there for the. I did. I did all the research. Okay. So mm -hmm. please watch those videos and just click on the description box, the more part, and you will see the link that uh -huh. will take you either to the website of the school, to the website of the recruitment company, or it will you can find the link for the HR to send the CV. Yeah. So if you are looking for jobs in the UAE, you can start off on my channel. Right. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Loads of love from India. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank I'm you so sorry much. Sorry for mispronouncing your name. Um, Egbe is asking, I think because you spoke about the school fee thing and that yes. is expensive. He, um, Egbe is saying that if you, if one has be, has to be given 50%, don't you think one spends his whole, whole earning on a school's, on a kid's school? Of course. <laughs> More than I understand what he's saying because it is very expensive. Because this is why I didn't take my girls with me the first year. Right. Because when I calculate it, you have a child in grade seven, and when you calculate it in Jamaican dollars, it's almost 1.5 million for one year. School fees is expensive in the UAE. So you have to find a school that gives you free tuition or gives you an allowance. I couldn't work at a school for 50%. Mm -hmm. That gives me 50% for it. No, right. it's going to be very hard. Would it make have to find, yes, I have to find another 50%. My, mm -hmm. my, my, uh, my daughter is in grade 7, and it's about 49,000 dirhams. Whoa. Per year. Per year. Wow. And that's not good. I have a lot, so a lot of miscellaneous charges that mm -hmm. I have to pay outside of that, that the school doesn't cover. Right. Uh, you have to think about bus. Um, paying for the buses. And here in the UAE, if you're not taking the child to school, you have to use the bus system. Okay. Is it easy, as I spoke about transportation, is it easy to acquire a driver's license there? Will your Jamaican driver's license work? No, the driver's license won't work. work. No, it's easy to get one, but there's a... It's easy and it's not easy. You know? Here in the UAE, I tell you, um, <laughs> you'll do something this morning and I'll tell you about it, Malika. And when you go to the office tomorrow, something it change you know change. so the um, process there's always a lot it's a long process but you can get your driver's license there are some countries and I, I don't know why our country is not on the list but it's not that they can easily just transfer their license okay. or, or transfer yes they just pay a little money and transfer the license like your u.s driving license 
you can right. just ease the tra tra um, trans uh, transfer yeah. here. You get the US guys, you can translate or whatever. Yes, but I have to drive for it. As Jamaicans and other nationalities, we have to drive for it. Was the test um, more or less, you know, similar to you, you know your test that you did in Jamaica? Yes, yes, okay. and they prepare you for it. They give you a, a, a book, whether you want the the hard copy or you can get the soft copy online, and then you have to do an exam. And after the exam, you have to do a parking test. Mm -hmm. And after the parking, you have to you have to do the road test. That's where you go on the road to drive. Right. And when you go on the road, you're not with inspect the inspectors are police officers. Uh -huh. So you'll be driving with police officers. But once you take the classes, you'll be okay. Is it um expensive to to get your driver's license? Um yes, I think so. Yeah. In US dollars, how much do you think it is? No, so I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'm letting it do a lot of converge. It's about 1,500 US dollars, yes, or more. That's a lot, yeah. You see, because I didn't feel my own first one, I did have to go back and do it again. That's a okay. lot of money, though. 1,500 US yeah. dollars, about, about that. It depends. We feel like ten dollars over my... here to get it, huh? <laughs> We pay like 10 US dollars to get ours. No, the thing here is that there are different categories yeah. of the process. If you want what is called a, a golden ticket, that is where you don't do any exam, you don't do any classes, you just go for the drive, you pay more. Oh. And if you want one that you have a package that you just spend a few weeks on it, that's it. If you want to spend a longer time, maybe a month or so. Which one is the cheapest one? I think the longer one, the month, the month one. It, it's much definitely. I, I I tell you, I don't think this thing is less than a thousand US. Oh my god! I don't, I don't yeah. like that. But here in the UAE, I I don't know. Maybe my husband, if he's still on, he could he he, he could tell me because he did his after me. I did mine. Right, that's um, fine. 20, 2019, 2018. They've probably gone up now, too. <laughs> yes, so, but it's different, you know? As yeah. I said, here you have a lot of things that you can, it's just a package you choose, which package. You, right. If you want the inspector to come to your house with the car, pick you up and just boom, you pay more. Yeah, yeah, it's UAE, you know, and UAE, it's UAE, Yanni, you know, you, you have this lifestyle, you, you pay for it. Yes. <laughs> you pay for okay. it all right yeah. well that is it for today um guys next week we will have another session on the uae with another guest um this guest is in dubai um so tune in next week you guys i think same time around the same time um i'll put yeah. all the information for you all but thank you so much to our guest once more miss Serena Young Davis for sharing with us. We said it already. I'm going to say it again. Go on over to her channel. She can, she has all the information there. And as she said, sometimes I do see where you post some job posts. And I'm like, do people want jobs or not? Because I see you posting them, but I don't see people gravitate. And I'm like, I don't want job or not. Because these are the same people who are saying they want to work in the UAE, but they're not. Guys, go on over to Terina's channel if you want to get the jobs. Yes. If you want to get the jobs, then go on over there, you guys, and you can ask her more, more questions over there if there's anything that wasn't clear and whatnot. Um, My husband is saying that he think a thousand US dollars can do it. Yeah, I know it's around about there. Right. Yeah. So yes, guys, thank you for joining. Please hit the like button if you haven't as yet. If you are not yet subscribed, go ahead and get subscribed. And if you are already subscribed, go ahead and hit the post notification bell so that you will never miss an upload from moi once again the link to our host's channel is in the description box thank you all for tuning in we appreciate you guys um egbe saying thank you terina um for oh, you're welcome. <laughs> why egbe is a lot of support and I, I can't lie egbe is always here and others too but all right once again guys goodbye 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 and goodbye and goodbye